for attending this English talk. It's very nice of you. Uh, and today we're going to talk about WebAssembly of all things. So you read the name of the talk, I assume, and I assume you heard about WebAssembly. And first thing is some information about me. My name is Elvina. I work at a French company called PeopleDoc, which I will tell you more about later. You can find me on the interwebs under these handles. And the first thing is my assumption that you probably know a thing or two about WebAssembly. And my assumption is that if you know about it, you probably know about something like so. Some very impressive 3D render, some video game ports, something you probably don't write every day or don't even really want to write. And you may be asking yourself, like, why would I need WebAssembly? Well, I'm here to explain to you. Maybe I will even convince you. So first of all, this GIF, it does not do justice to how it looks in browser. It is much smoother because WebAssembly is very impressive. Uh, and recommend checking out examples for yourself just to be thoroughly impressed and spend the rest of the day in awe. So what is WebAssembly? If you would ask me, this is probably what I would write because I did write this. Uh, it's a low level language with a very compact binary format. Uh, and it's just a thing that writes inside of your browser. Uh, the name assembly is a little bit misleading because if you know assembly, you probably may assume things about WebAssembly which are not true. It is more of the metaphor for your brain to grasp the concept of WebAssembly quicker. Um, but this is, definition doesn't really give you much to base your opinion on. So as a developer, you probably care more about this. It's a way to execute your code written in non-web languages inside of the web. So which language are we talking about? Um, C++, Go, Rust, because you probably do love Rust, because everyone does love Rust. Uh, and most of these languages have great ecosystem for WASM already, and you can run it pretty much out of the box. But why would you want to do that? Because this bare bones definition doesn't really give you much information, so I want to pull information from the source, from webassembly.org, and I want to pull two quotes. First one is about what it aims to do. WebAssembly aims to execute at native speed by taking advantage of common hardware capabilities. And the second quote is that it's a memory safe sandbox execution environment. In my opinion, these two quotes provide you with already a lot to impact, but I think this is everything you need to know about WebAssembly. So what, what we can learn from these two quotes, the three things, native speed, memory safety, hardware capabilities. Let's start with the hardware capabilities because there are some assumptions which WebAssembly will have about the machine that it's running on. These assumptions and requirements are very, quite, are very modest, really quite modest. You will be pressed to find a machine which does not fit these requirements. Basically, you can generalize it this way. If a machine can run a browser, it probably can run WebAssembly inside this browser. So this is something you don't have to really think about. Now the two other things are speed and safety. So let's start maybe with the safety. So some things about memory in WASM. These are just the fact that probably will help you to understand memory safety and just memory in general in WASM. First one, that it's a very low level language and it only has four types, which is great. You don't have to think about that much. Second thing is that it can only use as much memory as you assign to it, and what you assign to it is an array buffer JavaScript object of limited size. And this is really the place that WASM is, leave, is leaving in. It cannot leave this place quite literally is not capable of leaking or manipulating anything outside. And the last fact is because it's a JavaScript object, it will be taken care of by the garbage collector. So you really don't have to clean the memory yourself. And just because browsers are natively running the outside code all the time, they're fetching outside code, they're compiling it, all the, all the safety checks are already in place, just as we would fetch JavaScript but you have additional safety of the fact that you have sandbox environments for your code to run in. Of course, that means that you will have to deal with limited number of memory inside of your program if you're, if you're writing a WASM program, but I mean, that's on you. It's up to you to decide how you're gonna deal with this. Now, some information about the speed. First thing I want to show you is this graphic about how consistent WASM is across the three different browsers. And it is fast. But I mean, JavaScript is also fast. Some people, may not like it, but one thing for sure, it's, it's pretty fast at what it does. So what WASM gives to you compared to JavaScript, for example? Well, again, a few facts. First of all, much faster fetching, because even compact JavaScript is going to be heavier to fetch. 
Second thing is that you get free cleanup by your garbage collector. You don't have to think about that. It is much easier to compile because it's lower uh, than JavaScript. It's less abstract. And another thing is that it allows for just-in-time compilation, which means that you can get even faster compilation than, than normal. It is a performant execution, but this one's on you. Your Wasm application is going to be as performant as you write it, but it allows you all the opportunities to make it very performant. And lastly, it does need to be parsed and re-optimized. If you are from JavaScript world, as I am, this is something you have to keep in mind if you want to have a performance application. And this is the graphic I really like. This is what you get in JavaScript, and this is what you get in Wasm. Not up to scale, obviously, just the some things which you don't have to think about when you're running Wasm in the browser. No optimization, no garbage collection, no parsing, which is, in my opinion, certain simplicity that your brain probably will enjoy. Now, maybe we can move on to how does it work. And for this, I want to show you a couple of examples. So as I talked previously about, uh, Wasm is binary, WebAssembly is a binary, but it has a very nifty text format which is somehow, somehow somewhat human readable, uses expressions extensively. For example, this is just a simple addition function. So in case you want to debug your WebAssembly code, you can do that. Well, maybe not the best part of your day, but you can definitely do it. And the second example is just Rust code. And this is pretty much all you need to do to make this little grid function available outside. And as you see, we're importing Wasm Bingen, which is something which allows for communication outside of the VAS module with the JavaScript. And with little uh, attributes on top of the uh, definition are the way to let JavaScript know, to let JavaScript use this function outside of this little module. It's a very small piece of code. Maybe you, will, you don't see the point in that, but this is just to show how compact this is already. Technology is very well developed, and Rust ecosystem in particular is just so expanded, so it is quite easy right now to find anything you need to run Rust in your browser, which of course you want to do. Um, this is all nice, but maybe your day-to-day -day life doesn't really is affected by WebAssembly. So first of all, I want to make a few assumptions about the modern web development environment. Most likely, people writing web applications, they have a defined stack, probably something they spend a lot of time defining. They probably use or even work inside some JavaScript framework to a degree. And they have probably existing legacy code they have to maintain. So it would be nice to just rewrite everything in WebAssembly to have fast performance code and whatnot, but it's not going to happen. But WebAssembly is really good at being integrated in existing living projects, in my opinion, and this is why I think it's such a good, uh, good thing to introduce to your existing team. So with these assumptions, what do you get out of WebAssembly? Well, a few things. Not writing JavaScript. Maybe it's an argument for you. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's a chance for you to not write JavaScript for once. But I think many developers will appreciate that. Second one is that it allows you to have more challenging and different tasks at your work and also diversify your stack. Uh, JavaScript is very fragile. WebAssembly is not. So that's something you may consider. And it also allows extreme web compatibility. It's already adopted by all modern browsers. Emphasis on the word modern. Uh, <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> um, but it's not only that, it also has a very extensive spec and the future. And if you're interested in that, recommend reading on it. Basically, WebAssembly is going to only get better. And it's already in the browser. And you know that one thing is inside the browser, it's not going to get out of it because because browsers. Uh, so web compatibility is amazing, and that's something you know that if you inv invest time in WebAssembly, you're not going to have to rewrite this part of your code in the next half a year, as it usually happens in JavaScript. So now talking about your, let's say, pet project or your day-to-day -day work, what are the places WebAssembly will fit in your work? I have a few assumptions, and maybe you will like my ideas or not. First one is addressing the bottlenecks. So let's say you have extensive, uh, you're doing something with your data after, you, after you're fetching it, and there's a lot of work, and it takes a lot of time in JavaScript. Well, here's Wasm for you. Or maybe you're dealing with a very, very heavy payload, or you have to optimize or re-optimize your images, or you have to do some media manipulation. 
this is exactly the place where WebAssembly shines the most. And these small little bottlenecks which allow you to just make your application just a little bit more performant, just make your life a little bit nicer. Second thing is just aid your own development. As WebAssembly is really good for internal tooling, for um, writing tools for debugging, etc. This is a good place to introduce your, your first web, WebAssembly uh, program. Next thing is complex infrastructure components. The thing you saw in the beginning, the GIF, this is example of things maybe you will not write, but maybe you have a media player that you want to write, and WebAssembly is a great candidate for that. If you need fast, uh, smooth interactivity, WebAssembly is just exactly the thing you, you can use. If you want to do some VR or AR, if you choose to, of course, it's there for you, obviously. And lastly, it is security. So if you have VPN, encryption, whatever you, whatever you take, the sandboxed uh, nature of WebAssembly will allow you to do certain things which maybe you wouldn't want to do in JavaScript or any other web language. And this is pretty much the best place to use WebAssembly. So these are just a few examples of the things you can do. Hope I convinced you. Maybe you can convince your manager. Let's see how it goes. And just to end this talk, my name is Edwina. PeopleDoc is hiring, so please talk to me. And if you have opinions about my talk, and, or you, if you really agree with me, please come to me or ping me on Twitter, and I will answer all your questions. That was my lightning talk. Have a nice one. Hello. Um, I see it as uh, maybe a mean to deploy um, desktop-like applications, but fully cross-platform and Inside portable. Um, what are the limitations in terms of accessing the um, hardware uh, capabilities, since it is sandboxed? sandboxed? Uh, do you mean how much you can touch outside of your WASM code? Is this what you mean? Yes, so what you cannot do compared to a fully desktop application. Well, WASM is running inside the browser, so you limit it to the browser environment if you want to run it. And there are certain things, like even inside the browser, certain things you're better off doing with JavaScript. For example, DOM manipulation. WASM is really bad at that yet. Maybe one day it will be good. So yeah, unfortunately, there's not much you can do with the actual system. You have to create your program inside of the browser. So you limit it to the browser environment if this is what you wanted to ask. Um, yep, um, talking about uh, limitation, um, when you work with a language like Rust, um, who has an SDK um, for manipulating IOs or something like this, uh, what happens when, when, we, when we try to read a file, for, for instance, it, it crash at runtime, or you, you get errors at compile time? You get no. errors at, the compi at compile okay. time. Uh, I mean, basically, WASM is limited, like its ability is limited to what you are writing out of it. So you have to be aware of the surroundings of your application where it's going to run. So uh, yes, anything outside the browser out of touch, and also, but, but I believe that compile will just take care of you. It will not allow you to run anything which is not being able to run. Which m makes sense because then your application will be that much smaller because you don't have to import all the system uh, operation stuff. Is there over a question? Yes. Um, is it supposed to replace JavaScript at some point, or is it not meant JavaScript to? JavaScript is irreplaceable. You have to live with it. I'm sorry about that. Uh, it, I don't think so. I think um, it does. It re, it's, it's supposed to replace JavaScript in the places where JavaScript doesn't do good job. So as I said, DOM manipulation, the native JavaScript, it's still your best bet. Uh, but more complex stuff, the performance uh, bottlenecks, this is where was WASM is going to replace it. And hopefully it's going to replace it relatively fast, so if you're into adopting it, you should do it now.
So probably you would um, have the best of both worlds by having a mostly JavaScript application and accessing maybe complex cal calculations in exactly, exactly. WebAssembly. It most likely, people writing JavaScript writing it in the frameworks, uh, and they already like bought the entire thing. And Wasm is the way for them to address the problems which frameworks are not addressing. And many frameworks are pretty poor at many things. Um, so, like my perfect application, web application would be JavaScript application with complex co components written in WebAssembly and uh, data manipulation and manipulation written in WebAssembly. Because you don't want to do that in JavaScript. Like I like JavaScript, and then I don't want to do it in JavaScript. Hi, um, I wonder uh, if uh, how was uh, managed uh, multi-thread, or if your WASM code ran only on a single thread and virtual machine. Just as your language handles this thing, WebAssembly will just do the same thing. So if you want to write multi-thread code, WebAssembly will be able to do that for you. It promises you native speed. It promises you native uh, runtime. It's exactly what you're going to get. Uh, but of course, the, your WebAssembly is going to be just as good as you're going to write it. It's not going to be better than, than what you wrote. OK, thank you very much. Thanks for your questions. <laughs> Have a nice day.